What's up you guys? Welcome back to the YouTube Barber Academy. Now there's something that I hear in the comment section all the time. Ed, how do you fade from skin to long hair? So one of the things you gotta keep in mind is if you follow my system, you can use certain parts of it when you have to and other parts when you don't. But my system is built on getting you from skin to a number two, two into clipper over comb. So clipper over comb is really a big key here. We're gonna use it and we're going to use some shear over comb. So let's lock and load through this tutorial. Let's check it out and I'm gonna show you guys how you can handle some long blonde hair, make it look tight, keep the fade steep, and uh, yeah, you're gonna see. So let's get it. And I'm gonna show you how we do this. First, I actually started out with the Babyliss Low Pro. Uh, this was actually back when I was testing them. So I got the Gamma Dub number two on there and I'm just going out and I'm, I'm debulking. This is all part of phase one. So phase one, we handle all the debulking. We're gonna get them down to skin. We're gonna cut uh, and, and prepare for the skin fade. Cause we can't just put a skin line in the hair that's that long, especially not with blonde hair, especially not with uh, you know this, this type of fine hair. This can cause a lot of problems and blonde hair can be actually a real big challenge to fade. I'm gonna show you guys how to lock in and get this done. I have a full video on this technique, clipper over comb, man. And if you guys wanna check it out, I'm gonna put it right up here. But you're gonna notice that I'm gonna be using my pinky as a brace and I want you to pay attention to that because that helps me create that distance and keep that distance. All right, secondly, I'm gonna begin rolling the comb and thirdly, I'm holding it like this. All right, let's lock and load, let's go. Here I am lifting it out, cutting it, rolling it. Lifting it out, cutting it, rolling it, and then you're going to wind up resetting it to check it. So we're gonna go back and forth between rolling it out and checking it. Now, you can also use your mirror. You wanna pay attention to your silhouette. Your silhouette's like, you just don't want one side sticking out more than the other, stuff like that. You wanna make sure uh, that what you're doing is balanced and that it makes sense. So, we're gonna travel right around here towards the back. Again, rolling it out. Now, sometimes the back of my comb becomes the anchor, like in the back of the head here, and then other times you'll see me using a knuckle. I'll be dragging that, I'll be, I'll be knuckle dragging and making it happen. So, we're gonna keep on rolling, and we're gonna get right through this. So. Now, you know, the other thing here is I got the pencil grip and I'm using the pencil grip to really be careful so that I don't bang into this comb. Uh, and if I'm down low, I'll switch over to the handshake grip if, if I was doing like, say like a taper, clipper over comb, like when we talked about it uh, in that video. So clipper over comb is for removing large amounts of volume and blending that really short hair from that number two into that long length. It's gonna be super, super effective for that. That way I'm not running through 20 clipper guards and I'm not taking the blend too high and I'm doing it fast. So that concludes uh, that portion. That's actually phase two uh, when we do that, but let's roll back to phase one here because I wasn't filming for the phases in this case. So we're gonna drop this skin line in and I am curving it. So I want you guys to pay attention to that because the reason why we curve these guidelines is so that when I blend them out, I don't really have to use enhancements and it's going to shape his head and the silhouette of the blend is gonna be really nice. We are using the budget clipper combo uh, for the rest of this cut, man. So this is the cheapest uh, that you could buy on the market. Trimmer and clipper, you get it for like 170. It's the protege combo from Gamma. Use code Eddie, save 10%. Um, this is obviously not the same client, but I'm showing you guys how I'm working the electric shaver. We're going all the way up to that line, we're releasing pressure, and we're flicking out. I wanna get as close to that line as possible, but I don't wanna run straight into it, all right? I don't wanna run straight into it. So we got this in the open position, bam, click it all the way down to the open position, and we're going to put in our guideline, all right? I actually sent these clippers, I sent these clippers up to New York because one of the next cuts I'm gonna do with them, uh, I don't wanna blow it, man, I don't wanna blow it, but you guys are gonna enjoy it, you guys are gonna enjoy it. So uh, here we go, uh, we're, just, we're just trying to put in a guideline, I wanna keep it the same width. Number one guard, and we're gonna put it on, and we're gonna go two clicks open, boom, boom. So in this very rare case, I'm actually showing you guys 360 degrees all the way around the head. This is actually more closely related to how I actually work. This isn't usually how I film. So uh, I'm gonna rock these steps, two clicks, all the way around the head, and I'm creating just another guideline, same width as the one that I did in the previous step. And we're, we're moving out, we're flicking out. And then we're gonna begin the follow-up steps. Everything is the same, everything is the same. So the very next step, the follow-up step, is the one and one half. I like to do it with two clicks as well and I'm just sort of flicking out. Now remember, we debulked with the two, so the number one and one half should just about connect uh, that, that, that parietal ridge area. Parietal ridge is where I put the comb on the side of the head, that's right where the comb leaves the hair. So now, now, let's begin attacking that skin line. I begin with it fully closed, and I'm just gonna flick, I'm just gonna rock and roll right over top of where I put that trimmer line, and you guys are gonna be surprised, especially, especially on blonde hair, fine hair, hair that's kinda tough to fade like this, 
you're gonna find out that this is actually gonna make it really easy when I just flick over top of that line. So then I'm gonna begin clicking because we do got the clicks with the Gamma Clippers, man, you can't beat that. We hit that click and we're gonna continue flicking and we're gonna keep hitting that click. We're gonna continue flicking until we reach the top of our open taper line. Where we originally put our open taper line, that's where we wanna leave off. Now, you can also use the corners. People talk about all this stuff. People talk about flicking, but I wanna tell you guys something. It's really important that you guys are hitting these lengths. It's really important that you're holding this guard flat. It's usually a combination of me just very, very gently leaving the head. So let's jump to the half guard and put that back on. And again, you guessed it, two clicks, bing, bing. And there we go. So we're gonna rock and roll through the two clicks on that and you're seeing that this blend is starting to take shape and it's starting to come together. Now, something that I'm gonna see a lot of barbers doing is they leave the head too much and uh, they manipulate the way they're holding the clipper a little bit too much and they're not actually getting it down to all those lengths that they're supposed to get down to. So that can cause a lot of confusion, that can cause a lot of problems. Now, once we're done with that half guard step, getting back to it, we're gonna take that number one open. Um, I'm gonna open it all the way. I'm gonna close it down as needed and I'm just looking to kind of clean it up because like, as I said, like this is coming together good and it's really important that you stay locked in and you stay patient right here because it's just so easy to make a mistake when we get to this point in our blend. Now, what's nice about the Protege, uh, what's nice about the, the Protege is it comes with a taper blade on it. Now that taper blade is super forgiving and it's one of the things that I love about it. It's, it's not only is it able to cut close, it's super forgiving. So if I make a mistake with a taper blade, it's nowhere near as bad as when I make a mistake with something like this, like a fade blade. So when it comes time for cleanup, I always rock with a taper blade. Now on this other side, man, we're gonna move a little bit quicker and we're gonna rock and roll through it. And I'm just gonna break down a handful of mistakes that I see new people making. One, you are not entitled to be good at this. You are not work hard enough to be mad at yourself about messing up a cut, all right? You're not entitled to that. You haven't even worked hard enough to get there. So first off, put some reps in, put some work in, figure it all out, and then you got the right to be mad when things go south, all right? But realistically, we can get impatient with ourselves when it comes time to learn, and I can't stand that, man. You're not supposed to know how to do this. You are supposed to learn it. If it was easy, everybody would do it. So be patient with yourself as you learn this and don't be so focused on what your neighbors are doing, the person next door, all this other stuff. People are gonna learn faster than others in some cases. And you know, everybody can learn this. I ain't no different than anybody else out there. All right, so be patient with yourself. You know, two, be mindful of how quickly, you know, how much you're leaving the head. Um, we, we don't really leave the head too often. I mean, there's, there's a couple cases where we might leave the head, but for the most part, the clipper doesn't cut on the backstroke, right? So I'm just moving it back and forth, just like this. That's all, because I'm staying anchored on the head. Which brings me to some of my other key points is anchoring is, is life, man. Anchoring is life. Um, we're gonna cut the top here, so I'm gonna break off from that but you're gonna have to learn how to be anchoring to actually commit to some consistency. But right now, I wanna cut this hard part. So I've decided where I wanted to, um, where I wanted to part it, and uh, while I got the hair nice and wet, I'm gonna do a little bit of sheer over comb. This is also covered in the phase two video. We really break down this technique well, uh, but again, it's very similar to clipper over comb, but it's a little more surgical. I could be a little bit more precise. I could relax a curl. I could relax a dark spot. I could really make the hair and, and um, like kind of manipulate the hair the way I want it to be. Just nothing, nothing is gonna help you with hair that's wavy on top, fine like this. Um, it, it, nothing's gonna help you as much as, as sheer over comb. And you're gonna see, we're doing this wet right now uh, initially, but you're gonna see me return back to it towards the end of the cut to really, really dive into some of them areas and really perfect them. We're about to start the top. So you're gonna notice that I'm gonna hold up a Mohawk guideline. I do have the whole phase three, how to cut the top, okay? Like I said, I did this out of order, but I'm trying to explain this in phases so that you really understand it. Mohawk guideline, we're going to be using a traveling and a stationary guideline at the same time to help you maintain consistency. Let's get it, all right? So as you can see, I'm gonna comb this up. I always confirm with the client, I'm thinking about taking this much off. Yes, that sounds like a good idea. Bam, go ahead and take that off. Usually, I leave the front out and I cut the front down on the forehead, but because of the way he styles it, it's not a big deal. Once my guideline's in, I'm going to begin working in rows, just coming off of the edge of that guideline, and I'm gonna begin traveling with that guideline out towards the edges. So you're actually going to be able to see two guidelines when you work like this, and if we cut horizontally, we're going to cross-check vertically, all right? That's gonna stop you from having all them lines in there, 
and, and making any mistakes. But this is a really easy, easy technique. And if you understand 90 degrees, you're not gonna have a trouble with it. So I'm taking my protege uh, or the hitters, they're the cheaper version of the hitters, but they hit, boy, they hit. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put that line in there and I'm gonna follow it up with the razor, but I actually kind of missed uh, the filming of that. Uh, but one of the other things that's really clutch with this hairstyle is before you let him go, like even though he's looking good, tops cut, sides good, I could just send him out, right? But I gotta style it up, man. I gotta see how it is. I got the Gamma XL blow dryer. This is the best blow dryer I've ever used. It's super, super powerful and it's tiny, man. And more importantly, it fits in my station um, in, in just this really small, compact way. But, but mainly, I just love this little brush too. It's a very small brush for men's hair. Uh, it's, it's like a half inch. A brush like this is really gonna help you whip this hair into shape. Now, once I got it blow dried, um, one of the techniques I'm gonna be using when I blow dry is I'm gonna blow dry super hot, man. Hot as the client can take it and push it into my place. And once I got it in the place that I want it to stay, I hit that cool button, man. That's why that cool button's there. It will set the place um, so that you won't really have to use a super strong product um, when you do that. So other than that, like I said, we're gonna come through and we're gonna, we're gonna put the final uh, little touches on it. And you really gotta watch out for the thinning shears on this type of hair. I mean, his hair is fine enough, it's thin enough, and you could be cutting little holes into it. So I try to stay away from the thinning shears um, for the most part on, on his hair or hair that's like his. All right, there's certain times where they could really make or break the blend, and this is definitely one of them times where it could break the blend uh, more than make it. But there we go, we're, we're just locked and loaded, and we got that, that shear over comb area good. And it's just so nice how small the amount of hair that you could take off, how small those adjustments can really be. So once we got this all whipped into shape, man, I'm gonna style them up, and uh, you guys are gonna like this. Uh, I, think, I think I really like this haircut. It's like one of my favorite that I did in a while, and I forgot to edit this, man. This had been sitting in my computer for like months, for months. And when I came upon this, I was like, oh, that, that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice, man. So let me know what you guys think in the comment, man. And uh, you know what? Let's drop the comment. Let's, let's do a giveaway. We're going to give away. Should I give away one? You know what? No, no, no. We're going to give away both. We're going to give away the whole combo again, since I did it with the budget combo. Uh, we're going to give away another combo to somebody so all you got to do is in the comments, drop protege, something protege, something about the protege. I want to try the protege. Mad love for Gamma, yo. Appreciate Gamma for allowing me to do all these giveaways, man. And good luck to the person who wins. I'm going to let it run for like a week and then we're going to call a winner. I'm going to pick you out of the comment section. Secondly, if you're not from this country, man, I'm sorry, you can't win. I've had too much difficulty trying to send these things to other countries and I just can't do it. So uh, good luck to whoever wins this contest, man. And we'll be we'll be drawing a winner on the lives like we always do. This final spin in is about to die. Yeah. All right, so I I've been meaning to say I don't know why I got the golden gun, but I just went and I just picked it up. It's just like one of them things you just want to grab and you just want to like. All right, nah, but all right. So Gamma's been coming out with all these different little brushes, man. This is cool, man. This is like making styling a lot easier, like. Some of them are a little bit wider, a little bit thicker, so you can get certain styles that, you know, you've been after. You, you can do this in other ways, but this just makes life a little bit easier. And this is just one of, like, a ton that they've sent me that I've been working with a lot, and I really like them. So you'll see how it works on this. Once I got the spider wax in there, you know, I, I wanted it to kind of get a little thicker. I wanted to show them curls, and then, bam, I wanted to hit them with some aftershave. And... <laughs> My camera was literally about to die. It was on like 3% uh, and 1% on that final spin, man. So I managed to get that, that cut filmed uh, before I left that day. All right, you guys, drop it in the comments, man. You want a chance to win that protege? I appreciate you guys for hanging out. This is the YouTube Barber Academy. I'm Mr. Eddie Barber, and I'm out of here. And soon, soon, we're going to be dropping some other content, man. Smash that like, smash that subscribe button, and uh, hang out with me. All right? All right, you guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. The boosted. Here we go. Today's video... It's all about the rebel. Is it still the king? Now you might be here because you've seen the video best clippers of 2022. This was the champ based on several factors, but this is more of a long-term review because I've had this thing for five, six, maybe even more months. And I've really put this to the test. So we're going to break down some of my feedback after the long-term review. And I'm going to go on a little adventure along the way, man. So we should go get the one wheel. Oh, also, why do I got a Johnny B bag?